Hey there boys and girls of the YouTube world, today we're going to see if we can't get another Ford Flathead running. Well, it's not really another one, because we failed epically at the last one. This one, before I bought it, I checked the dipstick, it's got oil on it. So, and it's where it should be. So odds are it can't have that much water in it. Let's check her out! So it's your standard, I guess, 467 Ford jail bar. Maybe it's a 42. You can't really believe what's on the internet. Maybe it's a 41. Got the regular hood hinge here. The grill's actually a lot better than this one. It's got the Cyclops light. Last registered in 73. I don't know if that was a Nixon year or not, but she's got a 62 behind her. 33 F plates, so it's a... Uh, Redfield, Spink County, I don't know. It's from the big city of Zell. It was famous at one time. You can see by the writing on the door. Another Cyclops on the roof. Tires all held, well, the tires don't have flat spots on them, so they all roll real good. That's a plus. It was parked against a row of trees up to here, so I haven't really got a good look at this side. Cab corner looks shot. Passenger door looks real good though. Door opens. Got some pure maple syrup. That'll be good. Oh, it kind of had some box sides on it, but they they didn't come home with me because they kind of fell off. Omaha Standard. Maybe it is a 42, because that is a really strange steering wheel. It seems really utility-like, not what I'm used to seeing. Yeah, could have told you that was gonna be gone. That's Oh, that's the hood prop rod. That makes sense. We're going to need that. A lot of distilled water. I feel like all these water jugs are part of the reason that this thing was parked. Probably had a huge crack in the block. Awesome. No fancy fuel filler neck. Back of the cabs. Got a little hooey there. Pretty good one up there. Or else got your typical vents in it. Mice nested above the visor, so that's rotten. Pretty nice dash in it. Door's good over here. Oh, what's going on there? So your knee didn't rub against it? I'm guessing he swapped the one off that side onto this side, because why would this side be broke? When you slam the door, that rattles up there. All the glass is in it. How about that? Way nicer cab than the other one. Schwanky. Hood release, a few whiskey dents in the doors. You must have had a radio in there at one time. Store, I don't know, janked up on the hinges. Ah, she's been, I don't know, that hasn't been flexed on either there, but a little rotten in the bottom. Cab corner's better over here. A couple janks up there. Look at this bed floor. That was, she was stout. That's a lot of boards. It's like a whole bowling alley. Ugh. Custom seat cover, spare leaf spring. I don't know why you'd have that. She's got a PTO, Chelsea style. Keys in it, so good to go. 50,000 miles. It's OG. What are the odds that works? Oh my gosh. They just don't build them like they used to. Probably the first time that window's gone down and 50 years almost. Guy one time told me that this square diamond plate, it's it's rare. Well, that's great. Doesn't make it valuable. He thought it was valuable. So if anybody wants some square diamond plate, boy, have I got a deal for you. Where's the radio? Oh, a tow mirror? Just on one side. I don't see that radio. I wonder what that switch is for. That must have been for the NOS. Right there, hit that, slingshot, engaged. Oh, better grab our hood prop rod. Sure enough, that's why that stick was in the cab. You can see the springs and hinges aren't what they should be. Oil bath air cleaner's all greasy. I did pull the plugs out, spray some Zeppum down the holes. That'll for sure make it run. 
So it's got to go now, right? I mean, that's that's what I read on the interwebs. I did also put a pipe wrench on the crankshaft up here on the pulley and pried on that. That's not really helping. It's got an aftermarket coil on it. Usually they got a Bakelite Ford conglomerate crap box bolted on right here with two bolts, but they got a little adapter bracket. Got this guy. It's missing the Auga horn. Oh boy, we'll bump that stick. The fan shroud's a little, little chewy. Radiator hoses are my favorite flexi hoses. They're garbage. At least we don't have to worry about sucking up any bad gas because fuel line already rotted off. She must have been an oil burner. Had a little blow by because it's real greasy under here. But check this out. Oil. Yep. Made it the real dinosaur stuff. It's in the safe driving range. You can tell that because it says it. Oh, she's real drippy though. Not the good viscosity. Hopefully that's just because they ran synthetic back then. We'll just pretend like that's okay. Coolant. Uh, uh. It's rusty, so... I'm sure all those water jugs inside had nothing to do with that. Doesn't have the rebuild tag on the block, so she's probably never been punched out. It does have the crab style distributor, so if all else fails, we get that in a 94 carburetor. Oh, it's got a custom return spring set up on there. I think you just need to hook that around the belt and it tugs on it real good. Oh, never mind. That's for the choke, so she don't walk up on you as you're going down the road. Battery box is kind of rotted out, flexing a bit. I took a good battery out of a crappy car that I have parked for the winter. Watch this. I mean, it wants it. Like, you could see that moving, can't you? We're going to make this one run, though. I'm going to do the finger snap thing, and then... Ta-da, the cab's gonna be gone. I'm gonna snap my finger, and we're gonna have a flathead sitting here, holding the wide open. I can't snap my left finger, so we're gonna have to insert the sound. Duff Dog finally decided to show up, give a little help. Look at all the access we got here. Got the front end set off to the side. Didn't want to show you guys how I did it so that I hurt anybody's feelings. You could see the Pipe wrench that I had on the front there, trying to turn it, so that got me nowhere. I guess give her some more squirrel piss. Mark that belt, see if it actually turns, which it hasn't been. Now I guess we can get it front pulley so we can refund that nut maybe. Great. What do you guys think? Inch and a half? Nope. Inch and three eighths. I do have an inch and seven sixteenths, but inch and three eighths fits just right. Except for it's at the wrong angle. It really gives the old meat and potatoes, but I'm sure the nut's just gonna tighten. Right, like I said, the nut's just gonna tighten. Ah, oh, for cheese and rice! What if we get the distributor cap out of the way? Does that gain us any room up top to put a pipe wrench? The reason I took the front clip off is because there's, with the radiator and the fan shell and everything, there's just no good way to get at this thing. What if we take the fan and the generator off? Yeah, now we're talking. Good idea, Duff. She's stuck. So what I'm thinking here is if we find the cylinder that's got both valves closed, which there might be two at any given time, we take a spark plug or something threaded like that. Don't huff at me and tell me what to do. 
and we put a grease circ into said spark plug and put it in that hole and we pump it up with grease, put all kinds of pressure, like 3,000-ish PSI behind a grease gun, we can get that piston to move down and all the other of them to move wherever they got to go. Boom, Flathead Lewis runs great. So that, I think that's where we're going to wrap off here tonight. I'm going to try to figure out how to get this grease circ into a spark plug hole so we can apply grease to that to get it to turn over. So look at this concocted glomery of garbage that we found. A snap-on 14 millimeter compression tester spark plug adapter thingy-mobobber. A Milton 3 ace air hose female coupler. And then a 3 ace down to whatever adapter that is. 3 ace down to quarter inch, eighth inch, whatever. Let's see what happens. No way this works. Something's gonna leak. Something's gonna shoot across the shop floor. Duffy's already hiding. Oh, PBR. We need a nickname for PBRs. So good. Tight. Okay. Now you guys watch. Hopefully that ratchet moves. Breaker bar. Tomato, tomato. I feel like these air hose ends are not designed to hold up to this kind of pressure. This is where I guess the rich guys would use their electric grease gun, but we're peasant poor up here. We do have several tubes of grease because RT, he gave me a whole bunch of them. Whole case of them. That'll probably last me three lifetimes. Well, if all else fails, we'll get one cylinder really well lubricated. Oh, for five sixers, is grease going? Duff, did you check to make sure that both the valves are closed on this cylinder? Oh, this is getting ridiculous! Well, I guess when the grease starts running out the exhaust manifold or the intake manifold, then we'll over there. Now I think we're out. Yep. This here's the Schaefer's Synthetic Blend High Pressure Grease. Should do the trick. I hope. Starting to wonder about my life decisions. Oh boy, oh boy. We're getting pressure now. It's angry. I'm not going to stand behind it. You can tell that air coupler is not wobbling around like it was, so that's got some tension on it. Just start turning already. There's got to be some gosh dang pressure in there. Pookie says it's a life changing experience once you decide to carry a paint marker around all the time. I haven't done such a thing, but we're going to paint marker that up. See the turns. Our crappy grease zerk is pushing a little grease out the top. I can hear something make a noise. But that takes a lot of grease to displace an entire cylinder. All the way down, and obviously this is only going to work well, the valves are closed. It would be a lot easier in overhead where you could just unhook the rocker arms. Then you can do it on whatever cylinder you want it. Oh. Well, would you look at that? It's pushing the grease out between the head and the head gasket, or the head and the block. 
So that's telling you how much pressure I got in there right now. Oh, did it go? I think the mark moved. Did you guys see it? Is the camera on? I think it's turning Duff. Well, here's how much I got the crank to turn. That was straight up and down before, and now it's about a half a degree. Turned clockwise. Progress. You can see the grease coming out around the head gasket there. In there. So, yeah. There's some pressure in there. Let's keep getting after it. See what happens. Maybe it'll keep turning. Maybe it won't. And we'll tear it all apart. I think that's what's going to end up happening, but. There is a ton of pressure in that cylinder. Literally. At least 2,000 pounds worth of pressure. That thing's not budging. All right, I told you guys I was gonna get this thing running or die trying, so let's blast this thing apart. See what we got. The 59 AB has got studs holding the heads on, just like your six point slow power joke. The ABA, the later ones, actually have bolts going through there. The crappy part about these 59 ABs is when you get all these nuts off, which usually isn't an issue, you cannot get that head to come off the studs. I'm about to show you that. Maybe this grease will just push it right off. comments down below on how to get these heads off. I want to see what you guys got. Maybe we'll try it out on the next one. I would have never taken bets that that head would come off in about 15 minutes. Got all the bolts out, got in there with a small chisel that fell on the floor once I got the big chisel in there and pry bar and just kind of worked her back and forth and that thing came right off. There's a little bit of a ridge. Nothing too crazy in the cylinders. You can see all that grease that I had in that cylinder. I was trying to push it down with and you could see it was leaking past the head gasket into that cylinder. Yeah, everything looks pretty respectable. Up here, a little bit of rust was kind of creeping into that cylinder. So I'm guessing we're gonna find a whole lot of ugliness on the other side. Absolutely guarantee this side is more difficult. I didn't think that other side would go that easy. Well, this side came off surprisingly well. But I think we found our issue. That's water. And that's that's just a lot of rust. So, oh God, this. Like if a guy was gonna do anything with this thing, you'd have to put 
two sleeves in it, more than likely, or unless it's a standard bore. And you can maybe get away with punching these out. Oh, even that one's got a bunch of crap in it. Oh, how does the water get in these things? That's got to be the intake and it's cracked open and I suppose the somehow water gets into that oil bath fills up that cylinder with water. Sweet. I don't know what we're gonna do here. Those two cylinders at a minimum are gonna really smoke. But we ain't quitting yet. Let's see what we can get. So I guess I blew those cylinders out. That's just penetrating oil in there now, but they are chewy. Chewbacca. Gross. I wonder if we should dingle ball them before I start smacking on them with a wood block. I mean, it's really not gonna hurt them the way they are, I guess, or the piston. So let's just start whaling away. You always want to use a wood block because that doesn't damage the crusty piston that's in there that you're not worried about at all. And you want to start with a cylinder that's not either or that's not all the way down. So this that one might be all the way down, so we're gonna go with this one. Give it some heat, can't hurt. I'm just heating up around the edge of the piston where the rings meet the cylinder wall. Probably supposed to use some other type of oil, I know. That uh, cylinder actually looks surprisingly good after doing that. turned but I did not see the piston move. I wonder if it just sheared off that pin on the crankshaft. I'll be gosh dang. She's actually moving. This piston isn't moving though. Maybe she's coming all the way up. I did notice this thing has factory relieved block. I told you guys I wasn't going to quit on you. We still got a long ways to go. Don't worry. You guys screaming about I'm screwing up the front crank pulley. Oh yeah. Feels real good.
Easy peasy lemon squeezy. I feel like that valiant effort right there deserves a blue ribbon. Wow. Maybe I should have kept going on that other one. I think I'm gonna turn this over to that cylinder is all the way to the bottom. And we're gonna ream that one out a few more times. We're gonna do that with all those that are really scarred up. Probably wouldn't hurt to do them all, but we're just gonna do the ugly ones. Cause that's what I do, ugly ones. So this is my area of expertise on flatheads because every one that I've ever owned has been sitting a while. Usually I try to buy them loose. This one was supposed to be loose, it's not. It is now. But there's always a valve, usually two or three that are stuck on these things. So right here, this valve is stuck. So I turn that crank over until this valve is open because never at any given point should two valves be open. You don't want compression going into the intake and our suction coming from the exhaust. So I turn that over and this is our exhaust valve is open. So now we should be able to tap on the intake. And usually it's always the intake because water runs down, gets your intake valve stuck. And you want to just hit her in the center. There you go. You hear it snap shut. And then I think, so these, these outside two valves are exhaust, and then these inside two share that same exhaust port. So these two are intake, and these two are intake. So I think this intake was sticking. So we'll turn it over. Now as we start coming up the exhaust. So before I turn the camera on, I sprayed a little bit of Zeppum down inside that exhaust valve, or the intake valve. See how that just snapped right shut. And then we'll keep doing that. Sometimes you gotta get heat involved. See that one's stuck again. Usually it doesn't take much. Really I should have a straw on there. But you know how those straws go. They disappear right away. Sometimes you gotta just keep tapping away at it. Be persistent. Take your time. It's not stuck very bad. It just needs some special attention. And you can do this through the intake or sometimes you can usually see the both the valves through the spark plug hole but it's hard to Hit it in the center, so you're always tapping on the edge, which I do it a lot. I don't like to do it. Try to hit it in the center. That's hard to do through the spark plug hole. Good. It looks like every cylinder, the valves are both opening and closing. Let's go to the other side. You can already tell both are open on that cylinder. That was one of the pretty ugly ones. And then, like I said, the center two line up with that exhaust port. So it's this one, which has a bunch of crud behind it. See if we can blow some of that out of there. Wow, for as ugly as this side was, they're already working. There's some crud kind of behind those valves, so I might try to clean that out a little bit better. And you can already see, we're getting oil pressure. Nice part is it's dripping down into that cylinder that could use a little love. So you have it. How to get a stuck flathead loose and some stuck valves. Don't worry, we're not done yet. 
I don't have a whole lot of hope for this thing, but it's gonna run. It is gonna run. But it's loose. It was a pain. I don't think I've ever fought one that's that stuck. And like I said, this thing's just a core. Because I'm sure those cylinder walls are all janked up. We're gonna get her to run. She'll get enough compression just to pop off. We're gonna use those old head gaskets because I don't think I got new ones. So I popped the head gaskets off. What is that critter doing in there? Oh, he can go into the cooling system. And I found a few things I thought I'd share with you guys. So this is a factory relieved block. We can tell that is there's this cutout right here from here to here in between the valves. Kind of a rare-ish thing. I've only ever found one other one and it seemed like they were pretty common in trucks or hot rods, which we don't have many hot rods around here. So let's just say trucks. And also it's got STD on the top of the piston. Yeah, you don't have to worry about that. It's not like that girl you heard about in college. That means it's standard. So she's never been punched out. She's a virgin block. So that's good, which is weird. Virgin STD anyway. So this one would be a good candidate for boring out because not only is it factory relieved, it's also never been bored before. And it's still got the original Ford valves. You can see the cursive script on the intakes. You can never read them on the exhaust. I don't know if they ever even had them, but you can read it on all the intakes. That one's, yeah, that's the same, just not quite cleared off as well. Over here on this side, you can see that piston had all that water in it. So she's pitted up pretty good. Everything cleaned up pretty good over here too. But look at this piston. Something, the end of the spark plug or something fell in there. She banged around for a while. Got the edge of the piston pretty good and just beat the snot out of the top of the piston. I wonder what that, I don't gotta clean all this up yet. Not really much we can see on there right now. Let's clean those up. And see how they look and the other thing was if you ever get one of these apart make sure you blow out all these coolant ports and try to flush anything out of there you can it'll help these things there's usually a lot of sand castings and stuff in there that would float around everybody talks about flatheads heating and that's part of it there's a lot of other things with the design the two exhaust ports going through the middle heat couldn't get out but anything you can do to help them out so yeah i'm really glad i tore into this thing not only do i think it's salvageable now to get it running at least have a good time and make a good video out of it's a dang good block to find it's a 59 ab factory relieved standard bore so yeah it's gonna be a good one probably better hang on to this one i'm gonna see if we can't clean these heads up a little bit before we stick them back on Mostly try to clean up the mating surface, but we'll also try to clean up the combustion chambers as well. Got my handy dandy wire wheel, long sleeve shirt on to either get caught in there or to protect it from all the wires that stick into me. And my safety glasses. Cleaned up pretty good. Let me see if we can knock some big chunks out of there. This was the head on the cylinder that was pretty banged up. Would have been this cylinder. I guess I don't see anything too crazy showing what might have happened. So maybe the head's been off since then and they just put it back together. Hard to say. Figured since those holes are full of rust, let's blow out the passageways in the head to see if they're... Yeah, they are. Well, that's just a fraction of it. I'm sure there's still more in there. You can about imagine if there's that much rust and whatnot in the head, how much going on inside that engine block. So anytime you buy a flathead, granted this one's probably had a lot of water run over it through the years, caused a lot of rust scaling, but I think even from the factory, they said that there was a lot of rust and sand casting and other debris that were in these blocks that stays in there and it decreases the, the cooling capacity of these things, so. Anytime you buy one, always just assume that it's full of that stuff and you're gonna to need to clean it up. I think they're way good now. So I got both heads cleaned up. Took and did a little body work here on the head gaskets where I got into them with the chisel. See all the 
debris that came out of this head. This one's from the driver's side, or passenger side. That's a good pounder of beer right there, worth a rough. 16 ounces of it. So now we're gonna take our head gasket in a can. Now I don't believe in this stuff, I just had it laying around. So I figured I might as well use it. Cause there's no point in putting new head gaskets in this thing, not for what I'm gonna do. This is just a temporary, permanent fix right here. So don't scream at me for using the copper spray gasket. Head gasket in a can. Still hear crap rattling around in there. Oh well. Probably grab a 12 volt coil, but just got a jumper wire going from positive to the ignition side of our six volt coil here. Well, I assume it's six volt coil, but yeah, we got all kinds of spark. Watch this. It's not super consistent, but I think it'll work for what we got to do. Don't leave that hooked up for too long or those six volt coils go kapowy. Pretty sweet. I figured out that you gotta have the starter solenoid grounded out. So I just clamped around to the head there. Should probably find a coil. Nah, we'll be fine for now. Put the cap, plug wires back on. Might have some new plugs around. If not, we'll clean up the old ones except for the one that I busted trying to make our grease plug pull. Oh. See, we got sparks at the cylinders. If you give her some gas, look, it's gonna live. Three days into this project for a bunch of scrap iron. See what happens. First crank in almost 50 years. And nothing. Spark. Got spark. Maybe she just needs some more hot sauce. Oh, she wants to go. I think we gotta hook a fuel supply up. Then she'll go. So I got my handy dandy marine tank, 12 volt pump. I've noticed a lot of times that when you're trying to get something running, you can't just prime it and run off that. It's, it's got to actually have fuel pressure going to the carburetor to keep it running or to play around with it. So, yeah, it's what I've noticed. All right, this time things are going to happen. There's our accelerator, choke, crank. I don't know if we're getting fuel 
into the carburetor. Oh yeah, she's running right by the... That's the thing with these electric pumps, they got a little bit too much pressure for these old carburetors. So it's pushing right by. So I think if we go WFO, crank her over. So WFO is wide friggin' open. I think the plugs are wet because we got so much fuel in there. So I'm keeping it held wide open to try to get more air and not quite as much fuel. Hopefully that cleans those plugs off. If she lights off, she's really gonna go. The starter was kicking out there, so I know that it's just about ready to go. The joy of flathead starters. I can't feel any resistance from this accelerator pump, so that's not helping the scenario. I don't like that carbs doing us any favors, so I think I got a better option than that. Let's prime that carb up. Now, first start in 48 years. Try number, I don't know. Let's just call it three. Third time's a charm. guys can see that on the video. The hoist creeped all the way up to right there. That's why I had to shut it off because I was afraid it was gonna hit the overhead door track. That's friggin awesome. I'm gonna crawl underneath, tap that linkage, try and let the hoist down because the cable's stuck. I'm gonna do it from underneath so I don't get pinned underneath there and die. If I do, you guys will get to watch it sometime. This video might be post-mortem. That's the spot. No funny noises. Well, we should put a quart or two of oil in it. Just for S's and G's. All right, now that we got it topped off with oil, the hoist isn't gonna raise and go through my ceiling. Let's see what happens. Seemed like it ran pretty well before. Even kind of idled. Really love how low you can get these flatheads to idle. It's like a steam engine. You can just get them down to a hit and miss type speed.
the heads loose, little head gasket in a can, clean up the cylinders, a little bit of heat, a little cleaning, put her back together, some new plugs, different carburetor, different fuel system, a little bit of oil. All in all, not too bad. A couple cans of brake cleaner, a couple of bottles of grease, which I don't know if that ever did anything, but it could have. Can of penetrating oil, a little bit of gas, carburetor. I didn't even put anything into the ignition other than that wire there. Oh, I got two battery cables into it. So, you know, I'm, I'm probably into this thing for a couple hundred bucks in odds and ends. Oxygen, acetylene, head gasket in a can. But it's going to be a really good core. I wouldn't probably put it anything that I really cared to use because it's got the factory leave block, standard bore, 59 AB, two bolt front cover. The only problem is there's a lot of water jugs inside there. So I feel like this thing maybe had a heating issue before or maybe the blocks cracked. Maybe the radiator or something else just had a leak. So that's what the water was in there for. Maybe the guy just liked to drink a lot of water. Stay hydrated. I guess we'll find out at some point if I ever need to use it. Well, that was a struggle. I'm glad I got it going. I'm probably never going to forget this. I hope I don't ever have to do another one that's this stuck because... Got a lot of time invested in this. I don't know, three nights after work and a half a Saturday of dinking around. Plus, I still got to get it out of here and stash it away for future use. But these things can be saved. Hope you guys learned something. Thanks for watching. Click like right over here because I know you like this video, even though it's long. Check out my other videos. Subscribe. Tell your friends. Remember, doesn't matter how you get it done as long as you're having fun. Yeah, I guess so. The end part.